Hey everybody, uh, so this is going to be a P5JS lesson. Some of you already did it when we were at school before we went to the trip to the movies. So if you have, you can check out the next video that I'll be posting. But if you didn't or you just want to do a refresher, then I'm going to go through it. So what we are going to learn about today is using a sound object that does sound synthesis. The projects we did before were loading audio sounds. So that is a recorded piece of audio that we then put into our sketch and can access and play. What we're gonna do here is we're not gonna load anything into the sketch. We're actually just going to kind of create a synthesized version of sound. And remember sound is caused by a vibration. So we're just gonna sort of digitally make a vibration to imitate uh, how a sound would vibrate in the real world. This is like using a synth in P5JS. So I'm just gonna jump right in here. So the first thing we need to do, like we did with our sound object for uploading the sounds is we need to give that object a name. And remember an object is a basically a thing that does things. So we're gonna make this sound object and then it's gonna be able to do stuff for us. So I'm gonna make a variable called uh, osk. Now you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call mine osk and you'll see why in a little bit. But if you call it something else, just know anytime I write osk that you need to use whatever variable you do. So osk is going to be the variable name that holds the sound object, which is why I'm not giving it a value uh, like osk equals 10 or something like that. So osk is just going to hold that object. Okay, now again, since we're synthesizing sound, we're not uploading any audio into our file. We don't need to use a preload function or load in any audio files into our, our sketch or anything like that. We're just gonna kind of create it. So I can just go right into setup, keeping it in between the curly brackets. And here I'm gonna make my sound object. So this is osk, my variable equals, and I'm gonna write new p5 dot capital O oscillator, open close parentheses. So an oscillator is basically a thing that creates this synthesized version of a sound wave. So it creates this synthetic vibration that produces sound. So now I have an oscillator stored in my osc variable and now I can do stuff with it. So one of the first things I can do, this is called a method, which is basically a function that is specific to a certain object, in this case, the sound oscillator object. So I'm just gonna write osc dot start, open close parentheses. So when my sketch starts, it's going to just start this oscillator and we'll hear a little sound. So there we have it. So in setup, my oscillator now starts. Okay, so that is the basic idea, but it's just gonna play and not stop, which is not really what we want to happen. So I wanna be able to control when my oscillator starts and stops. Now, instead of a key press, I'm gonna do something a little different. I'm gonna use a mouse press. So I'm going to use function, create a new function down here called mouse, capital P, pressed, open, close, parentheses open, close, curly brackets. And I'm just gonna copy and paste my osc.start out of setup and I'm getting rid of it so it won't start when I start my sketch. And now I'm putting it in here. Uh, I'm just gonna skip the part where I would do this cause it's gonna play. Once I press the mouse, it'll start, but then it's not gonna stop because I haven't indicated any point where I want it to stop. So just to get ready for that right off the bat and write function mouse capital R, released, open, close, parentheses, open, close, curly brackets. And now when I let go of the mouse, it's going to stop if I put osc.stop, okay? And again, my variable is called osc, because I called it that up here. If you called it something else, you need to be consistent with whatever your variable is, okay? So now when I press play, I'm not gonna hear anything because I don't have osc.start in setup anymore. Okay, and when I go click on the canvas, I hear it, I let go, it stops. So, 
So now when I press the mouse, it starts my oscillator, and when I release the mouse, it stops, okay? So one thing about the oscillator, there are different kinds of oscillators. So I'm just gonna switch over here into Chrome Music Lab for a second and go to the oscillator section. So there are different kinds of oscillators that have sort of different sound qualities. So there's a square. There's a sawtooth. There is a triangle and there is the sign. Okay, so each one has sort of its own quality. The sawtooth's a little thinner and the square wave's a little harsher. Okay, so you can kind of play around, but if I go into these parentheses for the oscillator and in quotations, I can write, say, a sawtooth, and then I play it. Now I have a sawtooth wave. So you can do any of those, triangle, square, sawtooth. Uh, sign is the default, so you don't need to write it. I'm gonna go with a triangle wave. And there I have it, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I want to change the pitch, the frequency. If I go back here, you see it gives me the frequency value. Remember in sixth grade, we learned the frequency is the speed at which a wave vibrates and that controls how high or how low the pitch is going to be. Now in setup, I could do osc.freq and then remember frequency is measured in Hertz. That's the number of cycles. So how many times it vibrates per second. Right now it's at 440. So I could change it to maybe like 700. And I get a higher pitch. I could change it to like 200. I get a much lower pitch, but that's not really gonna do me what's good. What I wanna be able to do is actually change the frequency as I move the mouse. That's the plan for today. I wanna to move the mouse and change the frequency. So I'm gonna take this and move it into draw here, okay? But since I want it to change, I want it to move with the mouse. So I'm gonna go and use the mouse X variable. Remember mouse X is just sort of giving me the value of wherever the mouse is located on the X axis, which could start over here at zero and then go all the way to 400, which is the size of my canvas, okay? So now if I click, even goes past the canvas there okay so now I can change it by by moving it around like that which is pretty cool okay but you may notice as I'm over here on the left I'm barely hearing anything and the reason that is is because right now mouse X is only like one or two or maybe ten and not until I get over here am I actually getting a decent sound okay so now I wanna be able to change that. I wanna sort of take mouse X, the values of mouse X, which are between zero and 400, and change that range. So I have a range of values from zero to 400, but I wanna change that. So we're gonna learn something new here. It's called the map function, okay? Now the map function is a very important and useful function, p5.js, not just for what we're doing, but it can be used basically anywhere. We wanna take one set of values and move them somewhere else. I'm actually, while I'm here, just gonna jump into the p5.js reference here. And I'm gonna go to libraries and go to the sound library. Okay, so this is references for the sound library and all the kinds of stuff we can do. So we're using the oscillator. So I'm gonna go into that. Oh wait, no, actually, I'm sorry. I wanna just reference the map. That's what I wanted to do. I got lost here. So map. This tells me a little bit, so you can kind of map the value uh, from one to the other. But basically the idea is we have a value, what's the range of that value or that variable, and then what's the new range we want that variable to be. So I'm gonna create a new variable right in draw called pitch. Okay, you can call it whatever you want. I want it to be what it's gonna do, which is change the pitch. So I write map, open, close, parentheses, semicolon in there, I'm gonna give it the variable that has a range and then the new range I'm gonna give it. So in this case, the variable I want is mouse X and I know mouse X has a range between zero and then I'm gonna put width, okay? Because that will always be whatever the size of my canvas is. It doesn't matter if it's 400 or 600, it'll always change. So that's my range. But now I wanna have it start at 200 
the new range from 200 to maybe 1,000. So this means if I'm at zero for mouse X, the pitch variable is going to be 200. And if I'm all the way at the other end at the width, which is there, like 400, it's going to be up to 1,000. And then anything in between, it will sort of convert this range to this range. So now I'm going to go here to pitch. So the frequency, so it's this variable now holds this new range of values that maps from this. So now I click. Now I have a much more audible sound over here. So now I have a more interesting range that I can work with, uh, which is more interesting. So I could take this and add this to a bunch of different things. Okay. For example, let's say I also now want to change the volume of my sound. Okay. So I'm going to create a new variable for the volume and I'm going to just going to call that volume. Okay. But let's say I want that to change with the movement on the Y axis, the up and down of the mouse there. Okay. So I'm going to map and just open close parentheses and I want to map instead of mouse X, I'm going to map mouse Y. Now mouse Y goes from zero to height, remember, okay, which is the top of the canvas to the bottom of the canvas. And this range I know is going to be between zero and one. Now for this, the method for the oscillator is called osc or whatever your variable is, os dot amp, okay, which sort for amplitude, which remember we learned is the size of a sound wave, the bigger the amplitude, the louder the pitch. Also, like in Sonic Pi, we have something called amp, and that affects the volume as well. So that, I'm going to put volume, okay? So now, when I click, I move up, it gets quieter, I move down, it gets louder, okay? Now, I actually want it to do the opposite. I want it, when I go down, to get quieter and up to get louder. Now, it's a little counterintuitive and weird when we're working in P5JS, because remember the top is zero and the bottom is the height, which in this case is 400. So it's an easy fix. All I need to do is just change the range that I have here in my map function. So when I'm at zero on the Y axis, I actually want that to be one for my new range. And when I'm at the height, the the bottom of the canvas, I actually want that to be zero. So that volume, the variable there, when it's zero, it will be one for my amplitude. And when it's at the height, it will be at zero. So now I do that. I run it again. Here we go. So I start at the bottom. Now it's much quieter. And I go up, it gets louder. And I can side to side, change this pitch, up and down, changes that. So there you have it. What we've created here is just what's the basic instrument is called a theremin, which you can kind of play uh, where you move up and down. You can change the pitch. You can change the amplitude. And okay, so it makes sounds and annoy everyone that you are at home with. Uh, so. We haven't done anything with the visual yet. I'm going to stop this video and do another video to just talk about what are some of the options we have to add some visual to this since we have those options as well. All right, so see you in the next one.